we're back with our Squire Strat rebuild, part two. We're going to go through what it took to get the neck up to specs, uh, to fix the tuning pegs, and a good setup or basic setup on the neck and string height, whatnot, for a Stratocaster style guitar. So stick around while we finish up our two part series on the Squire Strat. Okay, we'll start with removing these lovely shallower pegs so we can get them straightened out and see what we have to work with here. 10 millimeter socket, loosen off all the nuts, and then take them off. We can see what we got to work with here. Okay, as you can see, the holes are quite crooked, so I decided to fill them with some quick wood. Uh, product from JB Weld. Uh, you mix it together till it's a consistent color and then use it to fill the holes. There you go. Fill it, wipe it back a little bit, try to keep from getting too much excess on the face of the guitar. Luckily there was enough finish to where it didn't really stick when you got it on the finish. So we put that in there and let it set up, which took I let it set overnight. Uh, it should be ready to drill actually a lot sooner. So to mark our new holes, what we do is you install the pegs. Try to get them pretty flat and in the positions that you want them in. So there we go. We'll go ahead and install them. And then once they're lined up nicely, take a straight edge, make sure they look really good. We will tighten the nuts. By tightening the nuts, it leaves the indention from the locating pegs, giving you a mark to drill for. So after I was happy that they were straight, gave them one final tighten to make sure I had good marks, and then we take them back off. Okay, see the slight indentions left behind by the locating pegs? Alright, the holes left over from the original tuning peg screws, I decided to fill those. So for that, we used some hardwood skewers and a little bit of wood glue. There we go, a little tight bond. Get some on the tip of the skewer or toothpick and just push it into the hole. Make sure you have plenty in there. You want it to expand and fill the wood grain to help make a good solid bond. All right, and then I took a razor blade as an attempt to see if it would work, but the wood was a little harder than probably should have been done with the razor blade. So for the others, we decided to use the chisel. There we go, a couple of wax and off they come, nice and smooth, doesn't do any damage to the headstock. There you go. Nicely filled holes and can barely be seen. All right. And use a little tape for a depth gauge because you don't want the holes too deep for the pegs. And then very carefully re drill the holes using the new dents that you created, showing you where to line it up and drill it in. Okay. And we test fit and make sure they were straight. Looks good. I would say in this instance, it would have been a lot easier to buy the tuning pegs that match the guitar, but because I would assume the person bought Fender pegs or Fender style pegs because it's a Fender style Stratocaster guitar, whereas these same pegs were probably available with the mounting tab to one side like what originally came with the guitar and would have been easier to use so all right then we reinstall the pegs make sure to tighten them pretty good but don't crush the headstock it's easy to crush the wood if you tighten them too tight so get them all nice and snug down and we're ready to move on to the next step Ah, looks so much better now that they're straight. 
Next, we move on to the fretboard. First, taking a fret crowning file, I top the crowns on the frets. They were very lightly worn, so it's mostly just to get the proper shape to them. Okay, it's a nice tool, won't score the fretboard when used properly. Then using a fret in file, I took the fret sprout down a little bit so it wouldn't dig into your fingers. Tool takes a careful touch or you will gouge the fretboard. It has a soft edge so as not to tear up the fretboard, but you have to be very careful when you're using it. In fact, I would probably practice on an old crappy guitar if it's the first time you've ever used one. Or even a practice neck. There's nothing better than a throwaway neck you can buy off eBay or somewhere for 25 or 30 bucks and learn all kinds of fret preparation techniques without destroying your precious guitar. So. All right, the neck was a little uneven and not nearly finished enough or smooth enough, so we'll take some 1500 grit sandpaper and to level it off, go across the grain at first. And basically you're just kind of polishing it because 1500 grit sandpaper really has very little abrasiveness to it, but it will do a good job leveling this without actually damaging anything. Remember, don't ever do this to a finished fretboard. Maple fretboards have a clear finish on them and you will sand it off and we'll have to refinish it. So this is only for rosewood fretboards or ebony. All right, then going with the grain with some 3000 grit to remove all the sanding scratches and to get a final polish. And you don't have to worry about hitting the frets. Uh, sandpaper this fine won't scratch the frets. If anything, it'll just polish them slightly. So. Then we move on to using the fret erasers. Uh, always detack masking tape. Uh, it can rip pieces of rosewood straight out of the guitar. It's much stickier than people think it is. It'll take finish off if you're not careful. So after detacking it and masking off the fretboard to protect it from the fret erasers, we start with the 180 grit fret eraser. Hold it at a 30 to 45 degree angle and basically sand or polish the fret with it. With the 180, you can sand with it. Don't use a huge amount of pressure. You're not trying to rub the fret down to nothing. You're just trying to clean off the uh, any corrosion and basically just polish it. And then moving to the 400 grit, same process. 30 to 45 degree angle. You do want to polish the top of the fret in a flat manner. Then finally at the finish with the 1000 grit to get that nice sheen on there where the strings will slide nicely. Okay, and then we're going to oil the fretboard. Uh, again, I use furniture polish. Uh, it's cheap, works really well. A little time-lapse magic. Wait about uh, 10 to 15 minutes to let it soak in. Applying in the extra if it gets looks really dry, but this looks fine. So after letting it sit, we'll take a nice soft cloth and rub it in and wipe off any excess. There, it looks beautiful when it's done like a piece of fine furniture. And feels nice and smooth as well. And now for a little basic setup. First, we start with setting the neck relief or how much bow the neck has in it. You start by using a capo at the first fret or getting someone to help you by fretting the note there. Then you fret the neck at the body joint. And then using a business card, because it's about the proper thickness, you measure the string relief. Um, this guitar did not have enough bow, so we are going to make a slight truss rod adjustment. by loosening off the strings first to give room to move the Allen wrench. This guitar was unusual. It had an American sized uh, truss rod nut instead of the expected metric size for an Asian built guitar. So always make sure you're using the right wrench when you're working on something like this. So then after we get the wrench firmly seated, you have to back off the truss rod nut slightly to 
install a little more curve into the neck so slight adjustment taking it off and there you go and now we'll set the string height okay use your string height gauge or a ruler with a really fine increment of measure and go to the 12th fret and take a measurement uh, this guitar was pretty good maybe a little low so then you adjust the saddle screws again this guitar had American uh, Allen screws and not metric so make sure you're using the right one and don't strip the head out of the screw anytime you make an adjustment on a saddle of uh, this type try to do it evenly you don't want the saddles slanted one way or the other okay measure again get it to about the right height then after we set the string height all the way across we use a radius gauge to verify that the string height is set correctly this guitar had a 14 inch radius by measure uh, you use the string height gauge by pulling it up against the strings and then lightly plucking the strings and they should be muted any strings that ring out are too high and you will need to adjust them down slightly all right and after that i usually run through and fret the guitar all over make sure there's no buzzes sometimes a light buzz can be fixed by a slight height raise on the saddle so lastly we set the intonation which simply means the guitar is in tune everywhere on the neck so using a tuner uh, tune the open string to the proper note in this case the e string okay once it's up to tune you fret the guitar at the 12th fret and play again noticing if it's sharp or flat this guitar is sharp which means the string is a little too short overall so you will need to tighten the saddle if it was flat at the 12th fret you'd loosen the saddle screw so after we check it verify that it is in fact sharp take a screwdriver tighten the screw Tune the guitar back down to the proper pitch and check again once you have it set at the open string and the 12th fret then you just simply rinse and repeat for the other five strings okay and now your guitar will be perfectly set up let's give a listen to how it sounds fixing the locking tuning pegs getting it all set up it plays beautifully even though it may be the ubiquitous uh, pawn shop guitar it probably deserves that honor so hey if you like this video subscribe Want to see more content on how to fix guitars? Be sure to subscribe. You'll get notified every time I put out a new video like this one.